So carrying on what is kind of turning into a bit of a course now is transitioning you from Webflow into my no code cool my no code tool of choice pine grow taking elements that you might be familiar with within webflow and kind of showing you the implementation of that in pine grow i'm going to sort of demonstrate to you how components are kind of created and reused within pine grow once again pine grow being a very much more feature rich and you can do a lot more with components than you can in webflow we're just going to kind of go through that and i'll, I'll take you through it so if you are new here my name is samuel gregory and this is the full stack agency so let's turn our attention on to the project at hand so this is my agency website and if we go into the who are we section i think this would be a pretty perfect use case for a reusable reusable component we've got the team here and uh, when you click on it it kind of opens up and you click on another one and closes blah 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 this being reused as a, as a component would be very very handy to me as i can add new members very very easily so let's go dive into pine grow see what that's like and uh, i'll take you through it bit by bit so here's the about page and Obviously, I've created this in static HTML and you do the same thing. Whatever component that you're creating, the first thing you do is obviously create that component. The, the next thing you'll do is if you go up to the top right here, you'll see the actions panel. You can select that. If you're not seeing that for whatever reason, you can go to uh, window and then show high panels and you'll see the components. Um, the actions panel there that you can open up and just looking at kind of through all of these um, options this one you can define um, a pine grow component use comp is um, sort of changing an element into a component section and we'll get into that when it comes to naming and organizing your component you can actually put them into sections to kind of make it easier to find out similarly now down here we've got editable areas and we will be going into this as well um, you define an editable area within that component you want to only be able to update certain areas in the component repeat is something that allows you to define an element within the component that is able to be repeated and we have a perfect instance of that so we'll be doing that as well i'm not sure why but i'm not seeing the the links here maybe pine grow can take a look at that this one can be deleted so you're, you're able to sort of set optional elements uh, within within a component that can be just deleted uh, use editable is similar to use comp in, in that you're just changing it into an editable area that you've already defined and then locking is preventing it from actually um, going um, from from changing anything whatsoever let's just dive right in the first thing i'm going to do is obviously define making sure my my wrapping element is there and obviously define that component and you need to give it a unique id good convention here is to actually give it kind of the project name mine's the jupyter the draft website so jtg is fine um, and then with a full stop and i'm going to just put person there just to identify the component itself and this is now the display name and of course i'm just going to put person this is like a human readable display name updating instances is when you come to change the component um, what you'll see is when you change the component you'll, you'll be able to update it using command command shift u for updating the whole entire project which is probably what i suggest doing uh, but you can also do quick updates with command u so this update instances actually prevents this component from being updated in those instances i'm not really sure why or there'll be there'll be times where you need that but you might come across them let me know if you do find or think of a, a decent way why you might want to prevent updating all instances uh, mapping urls is cross project kind of urls so um rather than it being kind of a an, i guess an absolute um, URL will become a relative so you can read that if you hover over it you can see the description there so we're going to leave all these as they are and then you can leave a nice little description and use a photo only for the preview so we get we get access to looking um, seeing our widget in the kind of list panel here um, and we can say that we don't want to see that um, photo it might take up it does take up a lot of space seeing that photo but you might find it quite helpful we can then just um, Conf confine that to when you hover over the component and you see a preview and then you also see an image of it so i'm gonna leave that as it is we can save that now and um we can we can update but we're not we're going to choose not to now the best thing we can do which is what we're going to do right now is probably move this definition to 
a, a style sheet, a separate page where all of our components are defined. The source component can have sort of the everything that that component needs and then each instance can add or remove depending on all the settings you have here get a bit more detail into that but what i'm going to do right now is actually just move this component definition to a style sheet okay i was having loads of trouble with um copying that into the style guide page i obviously have some weird setup that i can't quite remember what it did so what i've done and according to Pinegrove's documentation, I've just created a lib.html file and I've just kind of dumped it in there and that allows me to now use this as my kind of source uh, component or my original definition of my component. So I've clicked on add to section and I'm going to put about page as a section. And once again, if I command shift U to update everything, then when I go into my list here, We've got a new section called about page. And like I say, it works exactly the same way. I drag that anywhere I want and use it on any pages kind of going forward. Now, the next thing I want to do is start defining some editable areas because what will happen is we go into this page and get to the right section. If I drag this onto the page, this uh, component, I try and make any changes. It's going to warn me that this is not the original definition of the of the component. So I can click into that, go to the original definition and then make my changes there. So we're protected against any kind of updates or accidental changes to the uh, to the component. So let's start now creating these editable areas. And it might be easier if I just select uh, elements in the in the DOM tree here. But the first thing we're going to obviously want to do is be able to update this title here. So once now I'm in the component, I can define that as an editable, editable area. And of course, we want to give it a unique ID, um, which I'll name it uh, person to kind of prefix it all. And then I'm going to go name and just give that a name. Now, the inner content is will allow the, the editor or the developer um, or designer to be able to edit the in, anything inside of that element now this could be helpful this could be multiple you can add all any types of html within this element or whatever um in some if if not handled correctly it can be quite dangerous so be very very mindful when you allow edit inner content to be editable because it won't let you add anything inside of that element we need to do this um, because we're dealing with text inside of our editable area here. So we're going to leave that checked, but just be mindful if this was higher up, then of course the user could potentially delete or, or rearrange or, or correct, do anything they want within that element. So you're opening it to a lot of, a lot of accidental changes or just kind of messing up the whole idea of the component. Um, so just bear that one in mind. Next one in here has got the attributes. So I can allow for certain attributes to be edited. Now it's picked up that I've got class already on this element. So it allows me to change the class, but we have a unique kind of thing here. And we'll get into that in just a sec, but you can also add elements. It might be um, attributes. It might be an autoplay on a video. It might be it might be a width. It might be height or something like that that you want to be able to change on an image. So you can give access to specific attributes that you want to give access to. So that can be really handy too. Uh, classes, of course, this is really great for say menu links that you can, and it's giving you an example here of an active class. You can only allow the active class to be added to that element on each instance. Um, background image is the same because you wouldn't want to give access to the style attribute, which is where background image resides. Um, you want to be able to control that that they can only update the background image and then components is allowing only certain components inside of that element there but we're not going to touch that one in this particular episode so for me this is all fine and i can define that as a head of, uh, editable area i need to save and update i can now change that name to whatever i want so let's now run through all of these and uh, make them editable and then we can kind of i can touch on any kind of unique instances um, as we go so when the user clicks on this element, you can see that we've got an area here for, for paragraphs of text, but we might want to be able to, we might want to allow to add or remove multiple instances of a paragraph tag. My profile has two paragraphs, but I don't want to do that because then every instance will always have those two paragraphs. So what I want to do is delete the second one, define this as an editable area as we've done before, and then actually allow this to be repeated. 
Now, this will mean that a user can have one um, to many instances of the paragraph element to be able to add different you know, multiple paragraphs for their profile here. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to define that as a, uh, a unique ID. I don't think this is essential, um, but it, it will just be helpful for keeping things in neat and tidy. So now looking at the image and the way that this is marked up, um, we have a source attribute and then we have a source set attribute. So how do we enable them to be able to upload an image and then uh, edit the source set so that we can we can use responsive imagery? Uh, once again, defining that as an editable area, giving it an ID. Here's where we would disallow for inner content. So we don't actually want them to change any inner content, but we do want to allow them to change attributes. And like I say, Pine Grow picks up on the attributes that we already have on the element, and then we want to be able to allow them to change those. Similarly, on the source element here, we don't want to allow for inner, inner content. And once again, we want to allow the user to change the source set, and that's all we want them to be able to change. So updating that, going back to our about page here, but what we can do with this paragraph, we can now duplicate that and then add in that text that I copied earlier. So let's start from scratch here and let's recreate Neil's, um, Neil's profile here. So of course, I'm just going to drag that onto the page. It's going to start out with all the original information that we defined in the component. But of course, now we can then go down here and get the text by changing this one and hide that, paste in his text here and show that back up there. So you might find it a bit clunky that clicking on an element and changing the text. Now, what is the kind of a better thing to do is clicking on the component and clicking on the uh, properties inspector here. And down here, you can see all of the editable attributes that that component has, and then you can change them directly in here. It's a kind of cleaner way to do things um, than kind of clicking them and editing them. You can also obviously when it's an image, you can update that image just there. You can upload it. So we do that now. Um, but in this instance, because it's kind of a t registers it more as a, of a text field, we're going to have to do this a bit more kind of manually. So let's just do that. You can see that updated and then the source set here as well needs to be manually updated. But obviously the narrower you go, the narrow this will be so it can it will only show us what elements or sorry what editable properties are able to be edited so you might find that a little bit cleaner than kind of clicking around and, and whatever so now that we recreated that and made that into a component I can delete that and then we have two instances of our brand new component and i can just do this now for every single new person that joins I can add them and uh, make my life a hell of a lot easier so I hope that covers everything when it comes to components within Pine Grow. If you have seen something in Webflow that I've not covered, do uh, ask a question down in the comments or check me out on the Discord. I'll leave a link to that below in the description. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, well, of course, give it a thumbs up. Um, do subscribe if you want to hear more about how I'm helping you transition from Webflow to Pine Grow. And I think that's kind of everything. So happy building the future of the web.